it could be the dark horse of the hall. See what I did there. Hello everyone. So finally I'm sitting down to film this haul. It's been a couple of weeks. We were away last weekend and um, it's been a really really busy week so apologies for no video last week but I am finally here ready to film this haul for you and to show you what we bought from the previous yard sale that we went to. So if you haven't seen that then it will be linked so go ahead and watch that and then you'll see what I'm talking about or you could watch the haul first and then watch that and see me pick up a few bits. Now because it's been so long <laughs> I've got to try and remember how much I paid for things. So if I can't remember what I paid for things, then you'll see that in the last video anyway. Um, so yeah, you can correct me if I get it wrong, um, <laughs> uh, which I probably will. A couple of things are priced, so I know definitely how much I paid. And a few things were bundled together, and I think I kind of remember the overall amount that we paid. We'll see, we'll go through it. And, um, and I will try my very best to uh, give you the information. So where to start? I don't know. Um, I guess I'll just start with the things that are in front of me. As usual, there probably won't be any particular order to it. We'll just, we'll just be random and I'll pick up things as I see them. The two things that I have in front of me that I'm going to start with are these um, vintage Laura Ashley plates. You can see the the old logo there. So I'm, I'm probably dating that to about 80s or 90s. Now they're kind of terracotta plates that are painted blue. So my thought is these are like plant pot saucers. They're definitely not plates that you would eat from. And it was kind of a funny story how I saw these because it was a warm day. It was very sunny and everybody was so, so lovely because we had Jeff with us and we were keeping him as cool as possible and giving him lots of water. But every stop that we went to, people were, you know, offering water as well. Everybody was so lovely and dog friendly and, um, we got to this stall and she offered some water. I kept saying to people, it's okay, I've just given him some water, he's fine. And you know, I felt like I just kept repeating myself. So on this one, I, I just said to her, oh, that would be lovely. So, <laughs> so she says, okay, I'll go and get some water for you. She comes out with a bowl and then said, I'll put them in the hedgehog plates. I was a bit confused, but then she pulled out these the bigger one and a smaller one and she poured the water from the bowl into this bigger plate and you know Jeff had a drink I did think it was a bit odd I thought if you're if you've bought a bowl out why are you pouring it into a saucer <laughs> or a plate <laughs> I just I thought that was a bit strange but anyway perhaps she just didn't want to have a dog you know drinking out of her bowl that she eats out of that's understandable but as he was drinking I noticed the logo I was like oh my goodness these are vintage Laura Ashley so I said to her oh just out of interest are those plates for sale and she was like yes yes they're for sale um she had three plates two of them were Laura Ashley one was something completely different and um, she wanted five pounds for the three plates. And I said, well, I only want the two blue ones. So I paid two pounds a plate. I have looked them up and I can't find anything similar to them. Um, I'm not sure what other keywords I would use. So I, you know, I used plate, but then it just brings back all the dinner plates and the dinner service. I've used plant pot saucer, plant pot plate. 
nothing's coming back. So if you've got any ideas of what other keywords I could use, I've done um, a Google image search as well, but it doesn't bring back anything that's Laura Ashley. It just brings back lots of things that look very similar to this. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm really not sure what I have here. Um, but I think they're really interesting because they are vintage, because they're Laura Ashley. People love vintage Laura Ashley. Um, yeah, I think my two pounds each is safe in that. Um, and, uh, you know, the very worst, I will just use it myself as a plant pot. That's the way I always look at things. I, if Can I use it myself? Yes, I think I can. If you know anything about these or you've seen anything like this before, please let me know. But, you know, I couldn't leave them behind and I think they're really interesting. So I picked up some mugs. Can't go anywhere without picking up mugs, but they're pretty good mugs. I saw this one and I turned it over and lo and behold, it is Emma Bridgewater. So I've never seen one like that before. It could be the dark horse of the hall. See what I did there? I can hear everyone going, oh, <laughs> yes, I went there. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, it's interesting. I have not seen this design before at all, but I was quite excited when I picked it up and saw that it was Emma Bridgewater. And then I spotted this one and I've had mugs like this before, so I immediately knew that it was Denby, turned it over and confirmed that it was. And it's a really interesting one because it is commemorating Maxwell House, which is a coffee brand, uh, 1954 to 1979. And then it's got all about coffee on the back. So yeah, really, really interesting this one. I haven't actually researched that yet at all. Um, so I've got no idea, but I do know that this type of Denby mug sells well. So um, hopefully because it's just slightly more interesting, um, it will do quite well for me. Now I have a confession to make. Um, I picked this one up at the same time and I didn't really look at the design. So I picked it up, I saw it had a horse on it. We were chatting, so I wasn't really paying too much attention. And I turned it over and saw that the maker was Fenella Smith. And I thought, well, that sounds posh. <laughs> that sounds expensive. So I just added it in with the other two. Um, I didn't really look at the design. So the design, is a hunting design. And I'll be absolutely honest with you, if I had noticed that it was a hunting design, I wouldn't have picked it up. Um, I'm fairly sure there'll be somebody out there that will enjoy this mug. Um, but I don't enjoy the fact that um, I'm now facilitating that <laughs> um, because I'm very much against hunting. Um, However, I am now stuck with it, so I will need to pass it on in some way, shape or form. So I will, I'll have to sell it. Um, I could donate it, but then at the, at the same time, somebody else is going to have it eventually. So, um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes you make mistakes. So these are quite interesting. I picked up these two milk glass canisters. So I was chatting to the lady and I spotted them and I thought, you know, these are really interesting. They're milk glass. They definitely look vintage. Uh, there's no markings on the bottom. I couldn't see any kind of maker's mark or signature or anything on them. And um, she said that they were definitely 1960s and that she thought that her mother had sent away tokens for them and 
her memory was that there were potentially some sort of sugar canisters and she thought they might have been Tate and Lyle. Now I've got them home and I've done a bit of research and I can't find anything on these in terms of Tate and Lyle. Um, nothing comes up and there are a few that have been listed on various websites but they're just generically listed as mid-century milk glass canisters um, or milk glass apothecary jars but I haven't found any with any kind of branding um, or any further information on them so you know once again if if anybody has seen anything like this before and has a bit more information I'd be really interested to know and I really do enjoy finding out the provenance of things. However, I would have picked these up anyway because they're mid-century, because they're milk glass, and I think they're particularly desirable. I think they'd work well in a kitchen, as storage jars, but I think they'd also work really well in a bathroom. They would also work really well just as display pieces, you know, even if you weren't using them as storage jars. I think they're really attractive. So yeah, I was always gonna pick them up and I think they were only a pound each. I bought this book from the same lady. It's such a lovely book and I thought it would make a really nice coffee table book. The illustrations and photography inside are gorgeous. And living in a 17th century cottage as we do, it's just really interesting having a, a little look through and seeing, you know, the history of um, cottage interiors and it's just a beautiful book. So this is one of the pages with a cottage in Norfolk. So just looking at the date of when it was published, it was published in 1989. Um, so I'm gonna enjoy having a read of this and then I'll probably pass it on eventually. But at the moment, it'll be a really nice coffee table book just to um, sit and have a flick through in the evening and um, enjoy the the photography and a little bit of the history of these places. To show you another one before I move on. I mean, how gorgeous is that? Might even provide a little bit of inspiration as well. Okay, so I think we will move on to the stall where I bought the most from um, and show you what we bought from there. Um, but where to start? Because we bought quite a lot. Now, in terms of what we paid, Nick bought some things from there as well. And I think we paid about £11 for everything, which was amazing. So, in no particular order. I saw this vintage swan pan. Clonk. <laughs> and I opened it up and saw that it was a poacher. So the little poachers come out individually and then the water goes in underneath. Pop that bit on top, crack your eggs, pop them into the little individual poacher pans. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> So I'm not sure quite how old this is um, and it's probably not worth lots and lots of money um, but I just thought it was a really interesting item so I picked that up and then these I absolutely love. It's a pair of bowls from Barrett's and we've got some grouse and a gorgeous spaniel. So I think I'm probably going to list these as a pair. Um, I've seen other listings, so I think there were four of them originally, and I've seen other listings with the whole set. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it'd be more worth my time to do them as a pair, but how beautiful are they? 
Um, if anyone out there is interested in these and you only want one, then just let me know because I'm happy to sell them individually. But I think if I put them on eBay, I'll do them as a pair. Now you will have seen that she had a couple of rummage boxes and I started there and looked through there first. And I spotted these really interesting candle holders. I'd say they're probably Art Deco, but they have a very atomic look to them, don't they? They look almost like rockets. <laughs> so they caught my eye immediately and I, I picked these out. So I've got a pair of those. And then I saw these little pots, um, jewellery pots, just trinket pots. And they have the same design on them. So I'm thinking that originally these would have been part of a big dressing table set. So I've got a pair of those and a pair of the candlesticks. So yeah, I think originally there probably would have been a tray and there would have been other bits that went with it. Um, but these have been split up over the years. So because candlesticks sell better just as candlesticks without anything else, I'm gonna split these up again, do the candlestick pair and also do the pair of pots. But again, if anybody out there is interested in the whole set, the two pots and the two candlesticks together, then let me know, more than happy to do a price for all of it. But to put online, I'm definitely gonna do two lots. In the same rummage pot, I saw this um, pressed glass decanter and it's so pretty. It's not crystal, it's not cut glass. I don't know what its provenance would have been. It's got a horseshoe on the bottom and there's also a number on the bottom as well. So potentially it originally came with some sort of um, liqueur um, or even wine or something in it. But I decided to pick it up anyway because I know this kind of thing does have a market. These decanters are quite popular as decoration or to put um, sort of bath oils, that kind of thing in and use it in your bathroom. They're also a really nice addition for a guest bedroom. You can put some water in with a little glass next to it um, or just simply for decoration. So I picked that up anyway. It's probably not worth masses, but it's an interesting item and I think it will be very saleable. I spotted that she had these two Gaydon Melmex bowls. I um, don't know if I can show you the logo on the back, whether that will show up. Oh, I might be able to get that in the light to show you there. Um, I've had cups and saucers and various bits and bobs over the years um, of this vintage Melmex stuff and um, it's really popular for camping or for camper vans and that kind of thing. Um, so although there was only two bowls, I decided it was worth picking up. Um, but yeah, there won't be huge amounts of value in them. Um, so I may just put them aside. Um, that's Nick going out the door if you heard that bang. <laughs> I may just put them aside and, um, you know, just squirrel them away until I get some more Melmex in the future because I'm bound to come across some more eventually. Um, or I'll just pass them on cheaply. As you know, we didn't pay very much for everything, so I thought it was worth throwing these in. The very first thing on the stall that um, Nick spotted, actually, he was marching on ahead of me and um, immediately spotted it, picked it up and said, you'll want this. <laughs> it's um, the heirloom design Hornsey jug. And I think this is definitely a keeper. So yeah, that was a really lovely find. There's no damage on it at all. Gorgeous. Yeah, so that's, that's a keeper. I spotted this and 
my eye was immediately drawn to it. I love a bit of sort of folk art. Um, this was really colourful. And it is this. It's a sugar or flour sifter. Has a stopper on the bottom. So, yeah, it's got a little bit of um, rubbing to the pattern from use over the years. But it is mid-century. I looked it up when we got home and it is Lord Nelson. Um, trying to think what the pattern was. I think it was gay time or something like that. I will if I will correct myself on screen if I've got that wrong. Um, but how beautiful. So colourful. Absolutely gorgeous. And I had no idea whether this would be worth anything. But I loved it. And I would be very, very happy to keep this and display it, to, to be honest with you. However, it is worth something. You can kind of tell really that this kind of thing would be very collectible, and it is. Um, so <laughs> I'm not entirely sure of the exact value on it, um, but I have seen one on Etsy listed at £35. Um, not sure whether they're reaching for that or if that's how much it's worth. Um, either way, it was a lovely find. Nick spotted this one. And it is Archipel. See if we can get the uh, logo in the light for you there. So just going on the design, I haven't done any research yet, but it looks very sort of 80s, doesn't it? Um, it might be earlier. But she only wanted a pound for it. And I, I wasn't going to pick it up to start with because um, this kind of dish does sit around for quite a long time in my shop and they don't sell quickly. So yeah, I wasn't going to pick it up. But then when she said it was a pound, I thought, can't leave it behind now, can I? It's got its original lid. There's no damage. So yeah, I don't think it'll be worth masses, but definitely more than a pound. <laughs> so back to the rummage boxes. I noticed this. I loved the colour of it. It's one of my favourite colours. And I turned it over. It is TF and Sons. Little vintage planter. So I picked that up because that'll definitely be saleable. And it's in really lovely condition too. In her glassware rummage box, there were three of these. They are French bistro glasses. Now, I've seen either a video or an Instagram post recently where somebody was talking about vintage bistro glasses and how to identify if they are modern or vintage. And it was something to do with the base and how many um, sections they have. This is octagonal. But I can't remember for the life of me where I saw it. So do any of you know how you identify whether these are vintage, stroke antique or if they are modern? We actually have a couple of modern ones. Um, I think we bought them in Wilkinson's or something like that years ago. Um, and this does look different, but I'm not sure if it's vintage. I took a chance on them and picked them up anyway because most of what the lady had was vintage or antique. Um, so I thought the chances are these will be vintage. If it turns out these are modern and they're, you know, pretty much worthless, then they'll just go nicely with the ones that we've already got. So I've not lost anything, but I picked them up more to learn something. Um, we shall see. Again, I've done some Google photo searches and I've searched um, how to identify French bistro glasses um, just on the quick cursory searches I've done. Nothing very helpful has come back. So yeah, I'm not sure yet, but hopefully I'll learn something about them.
and I'll know what to look for next time around if these turn out not to be what I was looking for in the first place. I've always drawn to a vintage or antique serving bowl. I have so many of them in stock at the moment, but I do think they're quite sought after at the moment um, and they do sell well. So there is that. I spotted this on her stall and it is John Maddock Ivorywear and it's the Newbury pattern. I haven't done enough research yet to date this, so I'm not sure how old the Newbury design is, um, but I really loved it. Okay, I'm still on the same stall and um, Nick saw these and wanted to get them. Now, I've kind of stopped buying this sort of thing because it it's become these sort of wooden figurines are really nice, they're mid-century, but they've become a bit passe, maybe. Um, I think they've had their moment, but he was quite insistent that we buy them. Um, and I said to him, usually I, you know, I find something is broken on them as well. Um, and he went over them and he said, no, no, they're all in, intact, they're fine, but they're not. <laughs> You can see that the tip of the horn has broken off there. I mean, it's not terrible. It doesn't look bad, but still, if you look closely, it's obvious that it's slightly shorter than the other. Um, so I really don't know what the value would be on these now and if people are still buying them. Anyway, we have them. They are for sale. If anybody's interested in them, if anybody would like them, I can give you a price. Um, and eventually they will be listed. So, not much more to say about that. <laughs> um, what else did I get from this lady? Oh, and another thing that um, Nick saw that he wanted to pick up was a set of Pimpernel placemats. Um, they are, now what does it say? Usually it tells you on the edge, doesn't it? What the design is, here we are. Uh, British Castles. So we have a set of Pimpernel British Castles. And we, we do well with placemats, as long as they're in really nice condition. And Nick was looking at them. I haven't actually looked through them yet, but so far so good. A um, little bit of damage there, but nothing, nothing awful. Um, so what do we have? We've got, oh, the Tower of London. I can't see what that says in this light. Let's see if you can read that and see what that says but anyway there's that one again in quite nice condition and then we have Leeds Castle nice condition and this one's nice probably my favorite Windsor Castle like that just one little mark on the back again nothing terrible Warwick Castle, one of my favourite places to visit. And then the last one is Edinburgh Castle. Now I've seen that from afar, but never, never actually properly visited Edinburgh Castle. We've always had a dog with us when we've been in Scotland or we've been there very briefly and not had enough time so um yeah that's on my list of places i'd really like to visit at some point in time but yeah that's a nice set no idea of any kind of value on that but yeah that that's a nick purchase that i approve of <laughs> i might be coming to the end of what we bought from that stall um i think there's just one thing left which was this really pretty brooch 
Now, she had um, a box of jewellery, uh, mostly vintage, which I was looking through and nothing really caught my eye. I'm not a jewellery seller. Um, but then I spotted this. At first, I thought it was Lucite. It's not. It's painted and glazed. It feels ceramic. But it was just really, really pretty. So... Yeah, I picked that one up as well because I really liked it. It would make a, a very nice little scarf pin or just a nice little brooch for your jacket or something. So yeah, again, no idea of value. It looks vintage to me, um, probably not worth a great deal. Um, but once again, if I can't sell it, I wouldn't mind keeping it. So I'm pretty sure that that was everything from that stall. Um, there's a couple of other bits that I need to show you. I forgot to show you this actually. I got this from the stall with the mugs. I'm trying to get it the right way around. I think it's that. And I think she only wanted a pound on that. Um, yeah, I just thought that was really, really beautiful. So I picked that one up. And then on another stall, I spotted this and they wanted two pounds. My eye was immediately drawn to it and I thought, oh, that looks like Jersey pottery to me. Turned it over, it is Jersey pottery. Beautiful tulip vase. So um, there may be a keeper, but I'm not too precious about it. So if anybody's interested in it, let me know and it it can be for sale, but I won't be in a hurry to list it. I may use it for a while if I don't sell it straight away. So <laughs> it's a bit random, but I picked these up. I've sold some Bakelite ones like this recently. Um, and it's just something that's very useful. So because they were still brand new and carded, I thought I might as well grab those for, I think they're a pound might have been more, um, but yeah, that's definitely something that's quite saleable. People are looking for this sort of thing all the time for their furniture. So I thought that would be worth picking up. And then you will have seen me looking at this tray. It's in beautiful, clean condition. I've picked up trays like this in the past and they're usually not in very good condition. They've been used to death, they're scratched, they're often stained, but um, this one is in lovely condition. No staining, only very sort of minor wear. Yeah, so I thought that was worth picking up because I know this sort of tray is quite sought after. Um, the ones that I've picked up in the past, I've ended up using. Um, I've got one at the top of our stairs at the moment that I've, it's got plants on. So, you know, it's useful for that sort of thing, um, even if you don't use it as a, a drinks tray or, you know, a tea tray or whatever. Another thing I've seen people use them for is just popping on top of a table or a shelf and using it as part of um, a bar area in your house. So yeah, that was worth doing. And on the same stall, I picked up this mirror. Now, <laughs> try and show you the angle without um, getting the reflection of the window in it. Um, but look how beautiful that is. Really loved that. It's very arts and crafts, but also has a bit of a 90s feel to it, I thought. And again, in beautiful condition. So it has, on the back of it has a label to show that it's been framed. So it looks like somebody's created this mirror for themselves. You could probably take the mirror out and display a piece of art in it or a photograph or something as well. Um, yeah, I thought that was really gorgeous. And lastly, we went to the village hall and there were some stalls inside there. And we didn't realise that to start with. It was marked as you could buy the maps from the village hall. Um, but 
Um, I, during the course of the day, we bumped into some really lovely viewers and um, it was really lovely to meet you all. Um, and we bumped into this couple all, almost at the first stall that we were at and um, they had two maps, so they gave us a map. So we didn't actually go to the village hall to start with. Um, so thank you for that, um, for passing on the map. That was really kind of you. Um, so once we've been around all the other stalls, we said, well, let's go and see if there is something or just, you know, get a drink because they were doing refreshments. We knew that. And we walked in and there was loads of stalls in there. So goodness knows what we missed. Um, but yeah, we were having a little browse and I spotted this little pile of napkins and it just had two pounds on the top. And I said to her, um, is it two pounds for all of them? And she said, yeah, yeah, two pounds for all of them. So a bit of a bargain really. Um, it's a variety of things in here. Some of them, you know, have got the usual sort of vintage staining on them. <laughs> so they need a bit of a soak. But we've got a couple of, um, I suppose like, doily type mats here. Mats that you would put um, your pots on and whatever on the table with serving dishes on the table. So I've got a couple of those, there's two of those. And then there were two of these rectangular ones in a very similar vein. Um, I remember my grandparents sort of putting those on top of like um, cabinets or chest of drawers or whatever um, to protect them if they were putting ornaments on or um, you know just things like that just to protect the wood so yeah two of those um, and then we're on to the napkins so we've got this design and again two of those we've got this lovely blue crocheted mats. There's two small ones and a large one. They're really pretty, I like those. Yeah, they're really, really nice, those. And these are in very lovely condition. There's randomly one of these, which is Laura Ashley. And yeah. That looks to be in quite nice condition, really. Yeah, I quite like that. Might end up using that on our table. And then there was just this set of um, checkered napkins and the M&S. And I've randomly got seven of those. <laughs> Perhaps there were eight originally, but one got damaged. I don't know. Um, so I don't know if there's any value in them, but I thought a two pounds for that whole bundle, that was worth going on, I thought, even if I end up using them myself. And then I spotted some pottery and ceramics on another table and they were all 20p each, 20p. <sighs> Madness. So yeah, look, I've still got the price tag on them. <laughs> Uh, this is a lovely little piece of studio pottery and the mark on it is SD but I love the colour of it, I love the design of it so I thought 20p, bargain, yeah, not going to leave that behind for 20p and then there were two soup bowls as well and they were 20p each and these are studio pottery as well. They've got a maker's mark on the bottom there. I haven't got the magnifier on it yet, so I don't know who the maker is. If I find out before I finished editing this, I'll pop it on the screen for you. I'll do that as a pair, little rustic soup bowls. They're really lovely. And then the very last thing was this, which is Hornsey. The design is Passion. 
20p. When I got it home, I realised there is a hairline crack in it, which is sad. Um, so I can't resell this, but I think that I'll probably use it um, either as a trinket dish or to pop a plant on or something. But 20p, I was probably still going to pick that up, even if I'd have seen that there was a hairline crack on it, because it's barely visible. Um, it's just that I can't resell it. But I'm not mad about that because it's really pretty and definitely usable. So that's the end of the yard sale haul. Um, but I just wanted to share a couple of things with you before I go. So you may remember the charity shopping in Thetford video that I did a couple of weeks back. And I said that I should have picked up the um, gravy boat. Well, I went back recently and I bought it. <laughs> so it is Royal Copenhagen. And it was four pounds, which is not cheap, but it was definitely worth getting. When I was editing the haul, I looked it up and I thought, oh no, I really should have bought that. Beautiful, isn't it? Um, yeah, it was worth the four pounds. I dismissed it originally because it was four pounds and I thought that's a lot for a gravy boat. Um, I'll leave that behind. But thankfully, it was still there when I went back and I bought it. And the other thing that I need to show you from, again, from that charity shop is this. Two pounds. Can you tell what it is? <laughs> if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it for you now, here or here, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> but I will link it for you so you can go over and have a look at it. Um, but yeah, I bought this gorgeous enamel pan and realised it was actually a fondue pot, but it was so pretty, I couldn't leave it. Um, and I think I said in, in the hall at the time that, you know, even as a decorative piece in your kitchen, it is just stunning. Um, if you never use it as a saucepan or a fondue pot, it is absolutely beautiful. So I couldn't leave it. I had to buy it. When I got home and realised it was a fondue pot, I suddenly thought, did I just leave the other bits behind? But having edited the video, I realised the, the other parts to the fondue set were not there. They weren't with this pan at all. And I filmed most of the shop and I went through all of my footage and there weren't any other parts of the fondue set visible at all, anywhere. When I went back to the shop, it was there. In plain sight, they had obviously had it in the back room and they hadn't put it out at the same time as the pan. Um, and it had a separate price on it as well. So I paid an extra two pounds for the rest of the set. It doesn't have any, well, <laughs> at the time, it didn't have any of the um, sort of skewers that you use. Um, I'll probably find that next time I go in there. Uh, <laughs> So this fondue set is getting quite expensive now, but <laughs> I thought, I, you know, I've got to pick this up now to go with the, the pan. So I've got a whole fondue set without the skewers now. So, yeah, you've got the stand, the little warmers. Not too sure what that is. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, now have fondue set. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with you as an update. So um, yeah, I, it will definitely make the pan more saleable as a whole set. So as usual, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if there is anything that you've seen in this haul that you're interested in at all, 
or if you ever spot anything in the background that you're interested in finding out something about or you're interested in buying please do drop me a line and let me know don't comment on the video um, if you're on instagram you can privately message me on instagram um, if not there is an email address in the description box underneath this video just click more and then you will see all the information including the email address but i'm always happy to um, give you a bit more information send you some more photos if you want to see more of it um, and give you a price and like i say because we save on a couple of fees um, by selling privately i'm always happy to do a deal and sell it for a bit cheaper than i would do if i was going to um, list it on ebay or etsy if you did enjoy the video please click the like button before you leave um, that's really appreciated because it helps push the video and so that more people can see it and if you know anybody else who you think would enjoy this type of video then please feel free to share it with them and also if you're new here and you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more hauls like this or videos of us out and about vintage shopping or antiquing then please think about subscribing because we'd love to have you here all that said I shall love you and leave you um, I hope you all have a brilliant week and I'll see you in another video very soon. Take care for now. Bye.